You're good. If you go under community events or community calendar, you can get it in free without any charge. Okay. And I've done both that, and I've also done press releases where we do a major, <coughs> when we do our Miss Pennyette program, we do a major spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of ironical in our area, and I don't know why this happened, but if you mention to any of the businessmen downtown, Miss Pennyette, they immediately say New York State Women and Gates County Women. But you do it to the women, and somehow we're not getting that word where it belongs. But it is interesting because I've had some guys come to me and say, would you ask my wife to join your group, or would you consider using my daughter in your program? Mm -hmm. But it, 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 I get frustrated because the more I do, the more the men realize, and they're very serious about it. I mean, if, if I went into one of the banks and said to them, we're doing our program, would you have something to donate for the action, for the auction or for... The, the program, they immediately boom, 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 it's done immediately. Mm -hmm. But it gets frustrating because you want the other side of the <laughs> coin and you're not always getting the, the population Tell, tell them that's a pillow talk. But about the, last program, we, pillow well, talk. the last program we yes, had, sure. we had four people that came because they saw the thing in the paper. All right, that's a good story. Back there. Well, we have a publicity person who unfortunately isn't here right now, but she usually does it on Facebook, uh, Staten Island Parent Magazine, because it's really oh. very local, and the Staten Island Advance, mm -hmm. if we can ever get on it, but sometimes we don't. Well, yeah, okay. I send to the community events and the local newspaper uh, with, with not very good results. Yeah, I, 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 hear, I, hear, I hear your pain, sister. Anybody here? Okay. I myself do not send out the press releases. We have a publicity person who worked for both Buffalo Courier Express, which most of us old enough to remember that, and also for the Buffalo News. So she presents to Buffalo News, um, Business First, our two local Grand Island publications, the Niagara Falls Gazette, and, and also to our online newspaper, Isle de Grand, mm -hmm. and um, sometimes she can get it into the Niagara Gazette, like I said, yeah. and also on the Time Warner. Uh, okay. Well, those are all exactly what I was going to talk about. Now, I happen to do the communications for BNC, and I send it to our big newspaper. I also send it to the, all the small local newspapers, our bees, which are the free newspapers that get handed out. I also send it to our radio stations, our TV stations, and then I do what someone was talking about. I go online to the Time Warner calendar, to the WGRZ community calendar, to the Buffalo News community calendar, because, again, it's a case of some people read the newspaper. I love my newspaper. You're going to have to pry that newspaper out of my dead hands before I get it up. But some people don't. I know a lot of people that don't get the paper anymore. So they find out the news online. So you want to use both. And what do you send What do you send your press releases for, Robin? Um, announcement of meetings, um, special events, and accomplishments. OK, and that's perfect. Because one of the things, you know, Robin was talking about stories. And again, I'll bring up the Rotary Club in Buffalo, which I haven't even remember of. The Rotary Club is over 100 years old and has given out $2 million in grants. I think that's a story. I'm still working on getting somebody to pick it up. If you have something that's happening in your chapter, like this Penny Ann, or if, you know, you've accomplished something, or BNC just recently celebrated 80 years, those are stories that someone might have some interest in. So those are good things to send out. One of the things I didn't hear anybody mention is that if your chapters are belonging to your um, uh, 
chambers. Oh, right, yeah, exactly. You get a lot more leverage through your chain, the power of your chamber of commerce mm -hmm. in getting your stuff out there. So that's really a big outlet that is underutilized in the chamber of commerce because, mm -hmm. you know, if it, it doesn't cost that much to invite a number of people. Right. And, you know, the benefit that you get back from it is huge mm -hmm. because as soon as their stuff is attached to your stuff, yeah, exactly. there's a lot more power. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I also, because my company, where Graver Design, does a small amount of marketing, a little bit of branding, I also get press releases sent to me from uh, Buffalo Niagara sales and marketing executives for their meetings. And then I will post those. You know, it's kind of a reciprocal thing. So if there's another woman's organization, for instance, in Buffalo, there's also ADWA, which is the American Business Women's Association. I will on occasion post their stuff because I send it to them, too. So, you know, press releases, it's kind of a squishy area at this point. It used to be hard-nosed, you send it to the newspaper, that's it. Now, there's so many other venues, so many other groups. There's some synergy happening, and if there's other groups in your area, like you said, the chambers. If you're, if you're doing some event that you think businessmen might be interested in, send it to the Rotaries. Send it to the Chamber of Commerce. When you do your press releases, you want to keep them brief. Nobody reads, especially reporters. They really don't. That's why Robin was saying, if they'll put it in, they get inundated with stuff. So keep it brief. Put everything basically in the first paragraph. When I do press releases, <coughs> I have my contact information right at the top so they can get a hold of me, my, my email and my phone number, the one I will actually answer. Um, and then I, I put all the, all the information at the top, you know, what it is, where it is, why it is. And then at the bottom, and then the, the paragraphs that go down, it becomes less important information. So if they don't want to go all the way down to the bottom, they don't have to. Um, and it's always a nice idea to end the press releases with our mission and our vision, because it just reinforces <coughs> who we are and what we do. What I've got up there is what you guys already said. So you're 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 on top of this. That is in the handout that we got here. Oh, and <coughs> so let's get this one for a Let's get this one. Just this one for a One of the things that I mentioned this morning, if you were in my session, that I owe Renee some information. Uh, I've been working on a draft of a marketing plan for the state organization. I'm the uh, chair, the marketing chair. Yes, thank you. It's a point in the afternoon, I'm a morning person. At this point in the afternoon, words elude me. Um, uh, as the marketing chair, I've been putting together a marketing plan, and I'm going to talk very briefly about it tomorrow at the board meeting. But one of the things that I've been doing is taking a look at who our competitors are, taking a look at who we are, uh, strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats sort of analysis. And this is where I need you guys, you ladies. Uh, to help me. So these are some of the competitors that we identified that we normally, you know, are dealing with. Are there others in your areas that you consider to be competitors that we also need to investigate and include as part of this? So, oh, are you, okay. So we have the National Association of Women Business Owners, okay. The Chambers of Commerce, we've already mentioned those, service organizations like Rotary and so on, the American Business Women's Association, Zonta, Different colleges and universities may have like, women's leadership centers and that sort of thing. Are we missing it? League of Women Voters. Oh, thank you. Gosh. And this is where we're going to feel really foolish. Like, duh. Like, why didn't I think of that? But when we used to do lobby day, we used to partner with them. Oh, okay. that gave us more back then, and we lost that contact. Oh, okay. How about oh, AAUW? That's it. Yeah. Do you know what's really sad of a member? <laughs> the afternoon. Okay. I'm gonna leave because now I really feel stupid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Your Buffalo, Syracuse, and Rochester all have women in construction too. Oh, that's right. Can you repeat that? We couldn't hear a bit here. Women in construction. Yes. Yeah, the trade group. National trade, Association trade, of Women in Construction. Oh yeah. The Women's Bar Association. Oh sure. Sure. Got a lot of no, we're not suggesting that you should only be a member of one thing by any stretch, but it's like, okay, well, who else is out there? Well, I just wanted to say, my daughter's very active in the Rome group. Okay. 
and um, anything they do, right now they're running a mayoral debate, she's moderating it, uh, with the Chamber of Commerce. And boy, if that chamber is involved, they get publicity coming out of their ears. But try to get something submitted uh, on your own with just New York State Women, Inc. It's a different story. Now, the Syracuse has cut down our newspapers to three newspapers a week. Try to get something in there. It's like pulling teeth. I have sent so many things. I used to get it publicized in the smaller newspapers. They've gone out of business. So we really don't have much, you know, you know to work that's, with. That's why I was talking about, I, there's a, um, in Buffalo, it's the Western New York Women's Fund. And they help young women and economically um, to, uh, poor women become sustainable. I send my information to them. They post it on their online calendar. So that's what I'm talking about is looking in your area and saying maybe, you know, those other organizations, especially because I used to do this when I did a newsletter for another organization, I would send my newsletter to, to them and say, look, I will list your events if you will list my events in your newsletter. So that's, and, and the other thing I want to point out is partner with somebody else. You know, we're going to be talking about programs later on. And doing a program in partnership with a bigger, stronger organization or more well-known organization can help you go a long way in getting publicity. Well, I just went out as president of the Federation of Women's Clubs. Oh, now, okay. the uh, organization in Syracuse is a member of our organization, along with Zanta and all these other organizations. They belong to the Federation, and we do do that. I mean, we have a newsletter, a very good newsletter, that comes out monthly, and we allow all the other clubs send in information about their activities to put in our newsletter because they're part of our organization. Mm -hmm. We get such a poor response. Okay. I can't tell you. you. Know, Zanta is a good one. They send in a lot of stuff. But we the other ones, we're, we're wide open. Well, you know what? Speaking as a person who volunteers to do these things, sometimes we just don't have the time. It's, it becomes the last, you know, it's family business, and then whatever else. You gotta make the time. Yeah. You make the time for what's important. Yeah, but <laughs> you just keep on trying. That's what I'm saying. Just keep on, and think uh, a little bit out of the box as to, you know, maybe supermarkets. Who knows? Put your meeting notices up in supermarket bulletin boards. Yeah. Yeah. One of the other things, I mean, Tech Valley doesn't exist as of last year, but um, when we were very large, um, we used to really look at what our members' um, charitable organizations were. And like, um, our Chamber of Commerce has a program, Chamber Angels, so we always participate in that. Make-A-Wish Foundation, you're getting automatic from them advertising. Our, you know, Wellspring, which is our Saratoga County Domestic Violence Center, that was one of our pet projects, was always donating to them and, and doing things for them. And they have a huge online presence and a newsletter, and if you donate, even one member donates, in the name of their chapter, mm -hmm. that goes in their newsletter. You know, so there's those little other places like that where they are another right. big They're organization ones, yes. that's out there that's getting a lot of donation money, getting a lot of things like that, and pick up some pet ones, and they have theirs every month, and they acknowledge, you know, getting whatever they got and, and doing those things so that. So that but you just don't do it like when I donate, it's not just in my name, it was right. always in the name and right. from that chapter. Right. And then everybody joined. <laughs> I know. Well, here we, left <laughs> <our chapter. laughs> we left our chapter. <laughs> There's something else that you may or may not think is a competitor, but it really is for people's time, it would be local churches. The local churches. The local churches are so involved in so much, and they have their hands in lots of different things. They're a great resource. And Seroptimus is another one we don't have out there. What was that? Seroptimus. S-O-R-O-P-T-O-M-I-S-T-S. 
And that's all women too. That's a huge women's organization. We have um, in the Utica area, um, we're the Mohawk Valley chapter, but there's another organization, the Mohawk Valley Women, and then they're the Mohawk Valley Business Women, and then when we were BPW, that's when they be, they added business to their name too. So it's. Well, there may be some former BPW chapters floating out there. Oh, well, they weren't BPW, but they just were competitor yeah. then, and then yeah. they're still out there. So yeah. now when they're like the Mohawk Valley chapter of New York State Women, they're like, oh, that Mohawk Valley Women group? No, we're not that. We're the other one. <laughs> so. Auxiliary organizations from like the hospital, sure. the fire department, the group, et cetera, et cetera. There's, um, I mentioned it some other session, especially in Rochester, I'm sure there's one in Syracuse and Buffalo, these young women, the millennials, yeah. are in these groups where they're doing a lot of networking, they're doing a lot of volunteering, yeah. um, and that's, they're joining those groups because they're the same age mm -hmm. in their life. We were, I was at a, a meeting for Lake to Lake Women uh, membership and this young woman came in and you know, hope, they hoped she would join, but her comment was she wasn't going to because she, the group didn't look like her, and it, it, we weren't young like her. So they're looking for their own group. Demographic. Thank you, the demographic, and they're trying to further their careers. And what better place to further your career than with other folks who are a little bit older who can try and help to bring you along, I guess, a little bit too. We, and that's, a, that's a huge concern, I think, for us as, a, as an organization. We skew a little bit toward the more seasoned demographic. But I don't know that they think that we're going to help them. Many of our memberships members are retired. Mm -hmm. And, and they connect. And, and the, I mean, they aren't where they are if it weren't for our shoulders and our foremother shoulders. But I don't think they see us as a help. I think we have to put it out there. I was going to say, that's where telling your stories is going to be so <coughs> critical. Getting out there where they are, you know, as Robin said this morning. You know, if you aren't online, forget it. Yeah, if you right. don't have Facebook, forget it. And even now, with the Facebook, this is what I'm hearing from some of the younger folks. Mom and Dad are using it, therefore I'm no longer interested. So if uh -huh. you're not using Twitter and Instagram, Snapchat, Instagram. yikes, we're in trouble yeah. Okay. Yeah, we've been doing the business to businesswoman to businesswoman in the Greater Binghamton chapter for several years. We began with a wine tasting to attract other businesswomen, and we have found that there are a lot of women, uh, other businesswomen, who want to come in and mine the club. So it's very, it's it's really difficult, and it's a challenge to get them involved to keep them so that they. When even though they mined the club, that they made, they forged relationships and want to stay. That uh, to prevent the turnover, that has been a big challenge for us. One of the other things, like in in our, I think it was that conference, and we had the networking um, show or um, program. And one of the big contrasts, and, and I brought it up because I'm in my 60s, and. Two of the younger people in their late 30s, you know, we had to do a networking activity. And you had to be with someone who you didn't know in the organization. And there were two women in front of me. And then there was two other, Colleen Oz, the guy who was our president, and another younger woman. Mm -hmm. And then they had us at the end of that workshop, you know, say what they learned during that. And what we saw, us older ones, and this is an answer to you, where we can help younger women because they don't see the value. All we saw was a very clinical approach to networking on the ones in their 30s. They knew everything about what they sold, what the does. They didn't know a thing about the person. Marketing is personal. Mm -hmm. And us old girls who had to build our businesses, you know, because it happened that the other two were also small business owners, you know it's all about personal. It's all about service. It's all about getting to know the people and get them attached to you personally. And we just saw a radical difference. So when you're having younger people, those kinds of workshops and those kinds of presentations 
where they can actually see the value of having older mentors, I think that that's important that that kind of stuff happens on those levels. Because they want mentors too. Because if you remember, what do, what do they want? They want to get to the top. Well, once they've learned that they kind of have to work their way to that, it doesn't doesn't just start that way. You don't become the CEO of Google right. unless you start Google. Um, you know, so they they want mentors. They want the networking opportunities. So we have to make sure that we're welcoming to them, and that we are providing something that they're going to see a benefit in. So that's where you know we might need to, and I know we're going to talk about this a little bit later. Can we take a look at the programs we're offering, or the programs we offer our chapters, uh, friendly to everybody? You know, are, are we friendly when they show up? Or do we get into our own little clips? And I'm guilty of this sometimes too. I want to, of course, see my see the people I've developed the relationships with. But I have to be mindful, you know what, here's someone new. I don't recognize this face. I better make sure I have a conversation with her. Maybe I invite her to join me at my table. Or what have you. You know, so how do we treat folks? Or are we looking and saying, oh, young person? You know. Gosh, I don't want to talk to that person because she's going to be all about herself and I don't want to hear about this and blah, blah, blah. Or are we more welcoming, saying, you know what, I have something to offer to you, you have something to offer to me. And if you remember this morning, too, I said, they know how to use some of these tools, we can teach them the strategy. So it's sort of what you were saying. Mm -hmm. uh, for our federation meetings, we appoint two people as hospitality at every meeting. They are there a half hour early. They are meeting the new people that walk in. Now, if somebody in particular comes in and they think the president or someone else should be introduced to that person, they are instructed to introduce that person to the president or at least stand up and say, well, tonight we have so-and-so who's visiting us from, say, another organization or a possibility of a new member. But I, I, if you leave it up to the membership to welcome unknown new people in, they get there and they're talking in their little uh, groups. You've got to have two people assigned to that position. And it works. Mm -hmm. Something else, too, are you reaching out ahead of time? You know, I mean, I know we have little emails that come in, like, oh, potential new member, what have you. And it's very easy then to find that person on Facebook or on Twitter, whatever um, you know, medium you're using, and reach out. Send a quick tweet or send a quick note on Facebook if that's what they're communicating. Yeah, I think it was interesting, Robert, when you were talking about other groups coming in to mine your members. Well, that's exactly what we're sort of talking about now, is how do we get into other groups ourselves to bring members into our organization? And I think it, you know, what you're saying, what you're saying is that, you know, we need to offer them something. That's right. Now, I want to piggyback on that, offer them something at no, at no cost or obligation to them. We have women who can come in and do a personal, professional uh, development program for you. We'll do it for you. Yep. You know, um, real anything, really, so anything that we've got, just let them know we have it. Take that whole list and send them a letter and say, we're, we're happy to share this with you. In other words, you go to them and mind them. Mm -hmm. well, can I the thing that I found very difficult is a lot of people and networking doesn't just mean exchanging cards. It oh, means no. referring somebody or going yourself and then using me. And I find that when I can, you know, I mean, especially when I do everything, um, people come in and they want that, but they're not going to go back. We also have that different When you have a situation where they need to join, no one goes to there. Come to me and uses Another one that we have done, and uh, I think sometimes that we let go of the opportunity to be had because you don't focus on it and pay attention. We had done a thing with looking at the young, and we went to a volunteerism thing. And we had Girl Scouts, we had you know those type of organizations come in and talk to us about how we could help them to get into that floor level of the high school girl. Um, I was m matched up with a Girl Scout, and that was, I couldn't tell you how many years ago, and Angela came two years here to um, youth leadership with me. She had to follow me as a businesswoman for 40 hours for her project to get her bag, her badge, and some days she boringly sat in front of my desk all day while I talked on the telephone 
um, or research, read research, and she would just observe me. I took her and her mother to lectures and stuff that I spoke at. They came to our meetings. They went to other meetings that I went to in groups with me. I have stayed with her on Facebook since she's 16 years old. She is in her doctorate program in, nu in nuclear medicine right oh, now. Wow. But if you let go of that kid, you know, how many kids have we taken through youth leadership and we have no contact with them? You know, but here I've been with her since she's 16 and now she's in her doctorate program in nuclear medicine. And we're still Facebooking all the time. Same thing with scholarship winners, you know. Absolutely. Your chapter gives out scholarships, but then you never see them. I mean, you go back to them and invite them back to your meetings. And but you got to be so steady with them, like I am with Angie constantly. You know, I follow her in her program. When she comes home, we get together and we have lunch, you know. And how many years is that from 16 to being in your second year of your doctorate? And I certainly follow students. I have people who will tell me all the time, I don't think you should have students that follow on Facebook. And as Robin said this morning, I don't put anything on my Facebook that I wouldn't be afraid to share in this group, which, as you can see, is pretty well wide open. But I follow a lot of students and a lot of you know alumni now, and it's the same sort of thing. I know exactly what they're up to and so on. And it's so fun. It's so rewarding to see that. And then I hope that they'll come back and they'll see the groups that I'm involved in and so on. And, that, you and you see their growth, you yeah. know, because you are a mentor and you see that growth, you know, from 16 to now where she is and the woman she's become. And, you know, and, and it's not just me, it's other women mentors. She learned from her mom to her mom's that style. And, you know, that's gotten her to be to this level, but she's not forgotten all the mentors oh, yeah. because we make the effort to crisscross, and we lose that opportunity, and I'm sure in every single group, of hanging on to those girls. What we've done is, um, for our scholarship winners, because we don't do high school kids anymore, because they're ungrateful, <laughs> and they have they have plenty of opportunities. Yeah, they are ungrateful. Um, Ninety percent of them are ungrateful. They expect it, they deserve it, but they also have a lot more areas to be able to get money. So we have gone to women going back into the workforce. Um, someone that can use the money that really needs it, and then we give them a one-year membership. I have started recruiting some of the high school girls to help me with some of my mailings, et cetera, et cetera. I'm giving them a student membership, mm -hmm. bringing them in early, mm -hmm. getting their ideas, getting, okay, we want to be a business owner, okay, let's start dealing with this, what's your take on it, what do you think you want to do, who's in our group that can, you know, take you under their wing and help you get to your goals. Um, if you don't bring them in that way, you're really not bringing them in because they're not, they're just not going to knock on your door, I'm sorry. Well, we're certainly going to continue the conversation. I want to get into the SWOT analysis as well as talking about other programming ideas and marketing ideas, but we're going to take a break now so we can have a little bathroom break if you need coffee or what have you. So please come back. We have so much the vendors. Your input. The vendors will probably be gone by the time we get out of the next oh, meeting. So don't forget there's a silent auction basket in the back of the room.